I'm going to be sanding three jobs today. Um, I did this job uh, a while ago. If you can see right above me here, the control joint right above me. Um, but what I'm sanding is at the bottom of the stairwell where they finished off the bottom of the stairwell. Here is they put the, they put the rail on and it, it broke the drywall a little bit. So the reason I'm not wearing a mask either guys is because this is just really, really small. It's just a couple of repairs. But the one thing that I want to talk about right now is because I've been, I've been getting a lot of this feedback about level five this, level five that. And, uh, and pretty much my entire life, I have done smooth wall um, and occasionally flat wall. They didn't call it level five ever. They called it smooth wall or flat wall. Smooth wall, you basically got the wall smooth, ready for paint. Flat wall, you checked them out with giant blades and made sure that the walls were flat, made sure that the, the two by fours and the stuff that the framing um, was good. I mean, sometimes I'd walk in and I have these big bows in the wall because the framing was messed up. Um, we, used to, we used to check it before we hung the drywall and cut the studs and straighten the studs out before we even hung the drywall to, to try to prevent that. But flat wall was different. Level five finish means that you have the same texture everywhere across the wall. And they're actually trying to get the tapers to do that. Uh, and it's paint, guys. Most level five finishing can just be primed with a USG first coat, or they actually have level five primers to give it all of the same texture to meet plaster to drywall and everything else. So this has been primed, this is smooth, and there's no way I'm skimming out this entire wall. So this is all this smooth. It's just not happening. They don't want to pay me $500 to skim all of this because I have a small patch in here. That's the painters. You know, there is nothing, absolutely no piece of drywall that I can hang and not finish. I can finish every piece of drywall that I hang, right? I can paint every piece of drywall that I take and you're going you would love it. You would think that was awesome. Uh, I, 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 I know dozens of professional drywall hangers that cannot tape one bit. Now, truthfully, I can't hang the way they do either. They're putting up 50, 12 foot sheets a day. I can't do that. The best I can do is maybe 25 or 30, not 50. So, I can't hang the way they can, but they surely can't tape it. There's no way, they, they wouldn't even know how. And with the painters too, I have known dozens and dozens of painters. They, they, they couldn't walk into this job and, and tape this job. It would be awful. Yet they're gonna try to tell me how to tape? No way, absolutely no way. I can tape every piece of drywall that I hang and I can paint every piece of drywall that I take. By the way, I came here yesterday and, and taped, topped, and skimmed this yesterday. It took me, I don't want to tell you how long it took me because the builders might see it and say, hey, why did you charge us two hours when it only took you an hour? Um, but, uh, and today, I buzz in here, I dust this off, I'm not worried about the back side of this because none of this is finished.
done. This is job two. Uh, and I'm going to talk about this. Now, obviously, I didn't hang this, obviously, because they put these two sheets together and these two sheets together and they broke them in the same spot. I'm not too concerned about this wall. Truthfully, if this was all studs and, and it was just a framed wall, metal studs especially, I would take this down, I would switch the sheets around and things like that, but this is, uh, this is actually a free job. Uh, it's at the Hope Center at, at Bloomingdale Church and I'm not charging anything for this. I'm don donating my time and I didn't hang the drywall, uh, but I have a full length butt joint. Now, what do you do? I mean, honestly, they say, hey, don't do that, don't do that. Can you finish it if it is? If you do have a full length butt joint, absolutely you can. You can do this. It's, it's not as easy as when they're split because again, it's a full length butt joint going right down the center of the wall. Um, is there a, a bow here and a crown here? Probably. I mean, I'm not, I'm not running a giant straight edge all the way out here and all the way out here to take out any bows. But this is called smooth wall, not flat wall. If this was flat wall, yes, I would have to, I would have to probably bring this butt joint all the way out to here. This, this would have to come all the way out here to make this flat. The difference is, Probably on this butt joint and on this wall, $500, you know, I would want to charge extra for flat wall than smooth wall. And trust me, when I'm all done with this and it's primed and painted, nobody is going to complain. Nobody. I'll flip the camera around. This was a doorway. You can see that, that this was a doorway. It's been taped top skim sanded ready to go and it is beautiful it is absolutely beautiful you are never going to see anything on this wall when it's primed and painted um, so this wall here was an exterior wall let's see this was an exterior wall at one point then they added this addition i've been going to bloomingdale church here now me and my wife got married here 36 years ago by the pastor that was here so I've been coming to this church for over 36 years. Uh, but when I first came, the church wasn't built. This building was here. And this is where we used to meet. This was an outside. This was all outside. And over the years, they've added additions and they've done a lot of work. So, but this was an exterior wall. And all they did was it's all paneled with exterior paneling. They furred it out. They hung the drywall to make it go away. And, and I had to come in here and tape and finish it. So I'm gonna sand this now. And, and obviously I have my mask on now, but um, I'm telling you for years, probably for the first 10 years I taped, I never wore a mask. I never did. Could have been longer than that. And then I got a sinus infection that was just absolutely incredible. It was just, uh, now the slightest dust, I have an instant sinus infection. infection. So I wear a mask when I, when I know there's a possibility of me breathing any dust. And I wear a good mask. This is, uh, this is uh, N95, the real ones, not the KN95s. <clears throat> this is a good N95. And uh, so let me get this sanded real quick and, uh, and you'll see. Sanded, it's all sanded. This feels really good, guys, really good. And it is gonna be just, just fine. So I gotta detail it now. I gotta hand sand the corners, the angles, cause I did all of this by hand. So I just have to detail this real quick. And the next video on this, on this series, you're going to love it, all right? Okay, here's job number three. Now, <clears throat> all of the ceilings throughout this house, except for the, the lower level down here, are two foot on center. And then they put the insulation in there, and then they blew insulation on top of it. And in the 70s, when we were hanging drywall, glue came out, and they told us that we if we glued all of the drywall up here, there was no need for nails anymore. This is all nails too. There's no, there were no screws in this house. Everything was nailed off. Drywall hangers used to be called nailers. When I started taping, 
all drywall was nailed off. You had, you had, well, <laughs> in a four by eight foot sheet, we had two nails in the center of the sheets. And that's all that was done in here. Two nails in the center of these sheets. And then the glue failed. And all of this drywall was bowing down, all of it. Matter of fact, if you look at this right here, you see this sheet, because this is a sheet. This sheet was bowing down so badly that when the carpenters were snapping lines, you could put your hand easily here because this drywall came down so much. Easily put your hand there. So we drew it up the best we can with screws. Now, the only reason I was able to do that is because whoever did the sound or whoever did the bat insulation underneath here did a really good job. They stapled it very well and, and no spray insulation got between the stud and the drywall. Now, if a lot of spray insulation got in between there, forget it. Either take it down or try to laminate new drywall on top of it. But that wasn't the case here. And we were able to draw all of this drywall up. In some cases, draw it up about two and a half inches. Um, we had to push this drywall up to get two inch screws to grab. That's what we had to do. And then we, I slowly, slowly worked it up. I did a lot of the screwing off. <clears throat> I did a lot of the screwing off here. Yeah, I screwed off all over this house. I was screwing off all over. Um, but uh, it, it worked. I mean, I honestly, had, had it not worked, I would have said, hey, let's laminate this. But even right here, if we were going to laminate this, we would have had to have screwed this drywall up to a point where we could even put another layer on. But it, it worked. But that's not what I'm here talking about. I'm here talking about the difference in texture. Understand this, 1972 paint. Paint in 1970s, it was a clay-based paint. It was very thick. Um, it, it, it pretty much filled in bad spots in drywall. <laughs> You, you could almost you could almost spackle with it the paint back then and so 1972 paint 2022 drywall mud they don't match they don't even come close to matching so I've got two choices here right I can either let the painters and the painters are, are good in this area they know what flashing is they know how to stop flashing prime this and paint this after I'm done sanding and get it all to the same texture, right? Or I can skim out all of these, between all of these studs. The price difference is astronomical. If I am going to skim out this entire ceiling throughout this entire house, give me another $2,500 because that's what I'm gonna want is at least another $2,500. The painters have to prime this and paint it anyway. They're going to charge you zero extra than what they would have charged to prime this and paint this. The problem is, is if they mix their paint up too thin, it's not going to leave a good enough stipple to cover all of this. If they're using the wrong paint, it's going to suck in so much on these seams. Again, you're going to see all of these lines because they're going to flash like crazy. Drywall guys, tapers, listen to me. That is not your fault. It is not your fault if you see these seams after it's primed and painted. You have got no edges. You have got no crowns, no nothing in here whatsoever. It is a beautifully flat ceiling, beautifully smooth ceiling. If I'm seeing these things after it's primed and painted, shame on the painter. The painter did not do a good enough job. If I sanded this down and primed this and painted it, there would be no flashing on the ceiling. You would call it a level five ceiling. You would, because all of the texture would be the same. There's a lot of texture, even though there's no texture on this house. I mean, there's no popcorn, no orange peel, no knockdown. This is smooth wall finish. There is still a pretty good stipple on that drywall there because of the paint and that's going to flash not my problem as a taper not my problem 
That's the problems of the painters. And the drywall finishers are listening to painters. Understand this, the painter couldn't do this. Not in the time frame that it just took me to finish this house. They couldn't take this house and finish it. The painter can't do that. If he does, and he's, and he's a professional painter and not a professional drywall finisher, if he does do that, it's gonna cost a lot more to finish this house. So this is painting problems now. After, after I am done sanding this and detailing this house out and getting rid of all my edges, now it's up to the painter to stop the flashing, prime this out with the proper product. And I'm gonna post a thing on here too. A ceiling like this, I wouldn't even think about priming this with anything other than USG First Coat. That's what I would prime the ceiling out with and then I could paint it and I'd probably end up having to put two, paint, two coats of paint on top of my USG First Coat. But I would seal it really well with the USG First Coat and then put two coats on it. There's a lot of light here. There's a lot of light. There's a lot, lot happening here. Uh, the other thing, you know what, I'm going to pause this camera real quick and I'm going to show you what I did here. Okay, I'm back. Um, you know, dr new drywall here in Illinois, uh, if, these are, if these are two foot on center and this is a four foot sheet, I would be putting one, two, three, four screws across, but I would, it would be glued and the glue today does not fail. It does not fail today. I would be putting four across on every single one. Not much use for a nail spotter here. I, they, they, don't, they don't rent very well here. They don't sell very well here. I see very few tapers in this area using nail spotters. But with this, what we had to do here, a nail spotter would have really come in handy, but I didn't have one. I just didn't have one. And trust me, if I'm using a nail spotter, I'm three coating these screws because my mud's going to be too thin, it's going to shrink up too much, I can't get away with two coats. But what I did is I had pretty heavy mud and I put the first coat on by hand and the second coat, <laughs> I pulled out my drywall master, five, five inch box, and I used it to skim down the center of all of these. And you know, I dissed this a while ago, a few years ago. And I've got no use for it. I've been finding more and more uses for this little five inch box that I can imagine. So it is a great tool. The Drywall Master five inch box, guys, it is a great tool. It's really saved me hours in here skimming all of these screws. But that's, that's really all I wanted to talk about. You know, the difference in flashing, who's responsible for the flashing? Who is? It's not the drywall finishers. I, I'm going to repeat what I said earlier. I can tape everything that I hang, I can tape and finish. And I can paint everything that I tape. I can. I can do that. And you would love it. Everybody would love it. Uh, am I a drywall hanger? No. Am I a painter, professional painter? No, even though I've been in the painters union since 1976, I am not a professional painter. I am a professional taper. That's what I do. I've been taping for over 40 years. I know taping like I know the back of my hand. I know what I am responsible for. I know what the painters are responsible for. I know what the hangers are responsible for. I have owned my own company since 1990, and I have done nothing but multi-million dollar homes until the recession in 2010. Then I got into remodeling, lots of remodeling. So there is a huge difference right now in these two textures, huge difference. And I am not about to skim out this entire ceiling. That would be insane. That would be too expensive for this homeowner. I know this homeowner. And nobody's gonna wanna pay me to skim out all of these ceilings when a painter can match it all just by rolling it out like he's going to in the first place. You guys, have a good day. I hope I, <laughs> hope I didn't tick off too many people. Hey. If you really like this video, subscribe. And if you really, really like this video, share it with somebody else. You have a great day.